Hello, I'm Brett Knowles from PM Squared Consulting. This webinar is a brief overview of best practices we've helped organizations establish around translating their strategy into action in regional governments. We've been involved in this space for the last 30 years. In fact, every book that Drs. Kaplan and Norton have written cites our clients as best case examples, and three of our clients have won their prestigious Hall of Fame award. Most of the other books on the balance scorecards also profile our clients. In the public sector, they range from as significant organizations as the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, the IRS. In Canada, we've done organizations like the, the Department of National Defense, the Ontario Ministry of Finance, and countless hospitals and regional health care systems. The trick to making effective scorecards is to do it as quickly and as simply as possible. We've developed a methodology that we call the Rapid Scorecard, in which we've simplified building a scorecard down to five phases. In a typical public sector organization, these five phases can be completed in, in as quickly as five days, but typically between four and five weeks. The five phases are as follows. Overall, we must begin by capturing your existing strategy, taking a look at the existing strategy documents and plans that exist in the organization, and identify the five to 10 key strategic objectives. Working with the leadership team and council, we'll determine the relative priority of those objectives. Next, we need to identify performance indicators which exist within your current collected information structure. In most organizations, the data is available, but sometimes not immediately accessible by the senior team. Next, we're going to translate the strategy into action by listing your strategic objectives and core processes and understanding how well your core processes support those key strategic objectives and understand where the performance gaps are. We can then assess your existing portfolio of projects and determine its fit towards the strategic needs of your organization. We'll then spend some time coaching you and developing best practices around using this new strategic management tool and the associated management processes. And then finally, we can help you launch that into your organization. Let's quickly step through each of these phases so you get an understanding of how simple it can be. In terms of the scorecard itself, we're going to build a strategy model based on the four perspectives of the balanced scorecard. But in truth, you could use any model you would like, whether it's a Six Sigma or the, you know, Seven Pillars of Baldrige and so forth. The concept is we need to understand the relationship between these perspectives. So in the balanced scorecard, we understand we need to create stakeholder success. To do that, we need the right internal processes. To build and maintain those processes, we need the right enablers. And then, of course, the, the financials are kind of the foundation to the public sector. But again, any perspectives would work so long as we move beyond the financials. Uh, we're going to use the example of the region of Peel. The region of Peel has a well-documented strategy that has allowed them to win a number of awards. The strategy itself exists in its simplest form in the strategic plan. And inside the strategic plan, they've outlined their vision, mission, goals, and so forth. And I'm sure you have similar documents in your organization. We should be able to just frisk those documents for their key strategic objectives. So in this case, uh, you know, we talk about the region of Peel being a healthy, vibrant, you know, whatever the mission statement is. Then within this, we can begin to frisk it for uh, significant strategic objectives. So it talks about promoting partnerships, improving business practices, providing responsive services, and so forth. In fact, if we take a look at uh, throughout the document, there's a better part of 240 strategic objectives. So part of the trick is just to simplify it. But once we've identified that simplified list of strategic objectives, we can begin to organize them on these perspectives. So for example, provide responsible services is a stakeholder need. Um, uh, enhanced community participation, also a stakeholder need. Ban uh, balance financial and social responsibilities, well, that's a financial objective, as is maximize revenue, and so forth. So we can organize the existing strategic objectives across those four perspectives. The next step is to illustrate how they work towards creating overall success. So, for example, to provide responsive services, we need to both improve business practices and be able to influence policy. Now, if we can influence policy, that's also going to impact our ability to improve business practices. Enhanced community participation is going to work by uh, 
promoting those partnerships, and that promoting the partnerships is also going to support business practices. And by the way, if we can influence policy, that will allow us to promote partnerships as well. Then the enablers and uh, financial objectives kind of support everything that exists above them. So this is the beginning of a strategy map. The next step is we have to work with leadership to prioritize these strategic objectives. Illustrate for this period of time, whether it's this quarter, this year, or this term in office, what our weightings or relative strategic priorities are. That gives us a strategy map that we can then use to communicate the strategy to uh, the commissioners, the employees, the taxpayers, the program users, and so forth. From here, we now need to find some performance indicators. And in all of our clients, there's always data that's available. Some of it is not as high quality as we'd like, but there's always a starting point. So we should be able to take a look at these strategic objectives and begin illustrating in simple indicators how we're performing. In this example, green means we're at target, yellow slightly behind target, and the small arrow means we're actually declining in performance, and red significantly behind target, and in this case also declining. In this way we can easily communicate to the organization how our performance is and where we need to focus our attention. In this case we might want to focus our attention on improved business practices because although it's a yellow compared to the red, at 20 percent this is probably more important for us to solve. In fact in all likelihood this performance is in what's impacting the overall community participation. So this is a scorecard. And in truth, you've finished the performance measurement side. Now comes a tough part. How do we translate that into action? Well, we should be able to take that strategy map and first off, communicate it widely across the organization so everyone can see how we're performing and understand where our time and efforts are going. But step three is grabbing our existing processes and taking a look at how well they support the strategic objectives. What we should be able to do is take that strategy map and list the strategic objectives down the left side of a table and across the top the core processes. And we should be able to understand how well each process is supporting each strategic objective. You see, if you have a critical strategic objective, uh, in this case improving business practices at 20%, every process that touches it needs to perform at a high quality level. So as we rate and rank these processes, we can begin to see their ability to meet the strategic requirements of the organization. And in this illustration, we'll change their colors by green, you know, meeting expectations, yellow slightly behind, and red significantly behind. In this way, we've done sort of a weighted performance index of each process to see how well it supports needs. What this allows us to do is to provide a chart like this, which in this case, the length of the bar shows the level of process support we need to meet that objective. The blue portion represents current performance, and the gold is a gap between the current performance and what's required to be successful. In this way, we can clearly under identify where we should be focusing our efforts. So we can take that and uh, do a similar analysis now by core projects. If we take a look at core projects that the region is planning to do, and their cost points, we can begin to see where those strategic projects impact the strategic objectives. And again, we can go back to that chart and take a look at where the projects are focusing their attention. So in this example, the red dots represent the relative project focus. Now, if you remember, we're looking at the goal bars from before. What are the gaps that we need to focus in on? So if we combine those two charts, we'll see whether the project focus is in fact in line with the type of gap we have. In this case, we see that perhaps I1, improved business practices, is being under supported by projects as is provide responsible services and maybe even create an excellence culture. So in this way, we be can begin to see the invisible, understand how our processes perform and how well our projects are supporting those strategic objectives. This allows us to do not only that analysis, but begin building dashboards that allow us to drill into any performance issues to understand what are the processes and projects which are impacting that strategic objective so we can begin to coach, mentor, protect, and train the organization to closing those performance gaps. Now, if you want, we can do a similar approach using a logic model where we should be able to effectively take those strategic objectives 
through the logic model, drill them down to the critical success factors and eventually the drivers. What does that look like? Well, for that objective of improved business practices, there may be a number of things we need to do, which include identifying the opportunities, improving the competencies, you know, having the right budget and capacity to make the changes. If we take a look at um, how we, uh, the critical success factor of being able to identify the right opportunities, the drivers to that might be things like the performance analysis. And within that, the drivers might be the amount of Six Sigma work we're doing or suggestions coming from the staff. So the net is we can begin to link our process improvement activities to our processes, to our strategic intent. From there, the next step is to begin developing management practices that take advantage of this new strategic capability. And then finally, we need to uh, launch the overall scorecard in the organization. So it's five simple phases that get you up and running fairly quickly. Once you're up and running, like learning how to ride a bike or, or, or testing, test driving a car, it's only by being out there and using it are you going to learn what things you like and don't like and where you need to make improvements. I hope this has been informative to you. If you'd like to learn more, please join us at thebalancescorecard.net for a series of other webinars that go through each of these topics in more detail. Thank you for your time.